Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines. Violence by Myanmar's military against anti-coup protesters escalates over the weekend. Cargo ship stuck in the Swiss Canal is finally free. Lebanese left stages protest against deteriorating economic conditions. And in our video section, we take a look at the roots of anti-Asian racism in the United States. In our first story, military violence against anti-coup demonstrators increased catastrophically over the weekend in Myanmar. On Sunday, March 28, the military opened fire on those who had gathered to mourn people killed the previous day in Yangon. On Saturday, security forces killed at least 114 anti-coup protesters, some of whom were children, in various parts of the country, making it the deadliest day since the protests began in February after the military staged a coup and arrested Aung San Suu Kyi and other political leaders. Though the exact number of people killed on Saturday is difficult to verify, according to Myanmar now, among those killed were 29 people in Mandalay and 24 in Yangon. The total number of protesters killed by security forces in the protests so far has crossed 440. The killings have invited global condemnation with the UN issuing a fresh call for the end of violence against the protesters. Saturday was also Myanmar's annual Armed Forces Day which commemorates the start of resistance against the Japanese occupation during World War II. During the celebration which is attended by representatives of different countries including India, the leader of the coup general Min Aung Hlaing claimed that fresh elections would be held in the country as soon as possible. Thousands of people have fled the country to neighboring India and Thailand and other countries. Condemning the apparent inaction by the world community, UN Special Rapporteur in Myanmar, Tom Andrews, asked for immediate action, saying that the people of Myanmar need the world's support. In our next story ever given, the giant cargo ship blocking the Suez Canal has finally been freed according to officials. However, it's unclear when normal traffic will resume in the key waterway. BBC quoted Peter Berdowski, CEO of Dutch salvage company Boscalis, as saying that the ever given had been refloated at 1.05 GMT on Monday thereby making free passage to the Suez Canal possible again. The cargo cargo ship had become diagonally struck in the Suez Canal on March 23rd. It currently carries the flag of Panama and is operated by the Evergreen Marine Corps. Owners of the Taiwan-based company stated that the ship had been overcome by strong winds as it entered the canal from the Red Sea. Weather forecasts also stated that the area saw high winds up to 50 km per hour and a sandstorm. However, the authorities have stated that the weather conditions were not the main reasons and an investigation is underway. Rescue efforts were initiated on Wednesday as tugboats reached the site. The BBC also quoted Boscalis as saying that a 30,000 cubic meters of sand was dredged and a total of 11 harbour tugs and two powerful seagoing tugs were deployed. Around 10% of the world's trade passes to the Suez Canal. Data company Lloyd's List and Canal Authority have reported that around 400 ships are waiting to pass through. The obstruction has led to an estimated loss of around $10 billion of global trade each day. In our next story, we go to Lebanon where scores of ordinary citizens participated in a massive protest demonstration in the capital Beirut on Sunday to express their disapproval and anger over the worsening socio-economic situation in the country. The demonstrations were organized by the Lebanese Communist Party and protesters condemned the administrative vacuum in the country because of the dominant political parties not being able to reach an agreement on government formation. The interim government is more or less powerless to make any significant decisions towards improving citizens' lives and to rescue the failing economy. During the protest, hundreds of citizens staged a vigil in front of the central bank before proceeding to march towards the presidential palace, while being escorted by army vehicles amid tight security. The Secretary General of the Lebanese Communist Party, Hana Garib, spoke to the protesters telling them that the protest sought to make accountable those responsible for economic collapse and added that whoever failed to manage the country must go. A statement by the Lebanese Communist Party deplored and expressed concern about the virtual complete collapse that has occurred in the last several years in the socio-economic conditions of the country. particularly referring to the widespread and growing issues of hunger, disease, unemployment and poverty among others. And finally, in our video section we bring you a, a chunk of an interview with K Pritzker of Breakthrough News on the recent incidents of anti-Asian racism in the United States. Could you maybe take us through this narrative that's being spun which is true of course to some extent that you know it's Trump and his recent campaigns and his racism which have been responsible for these attacks but there is something more deep rooted and deep seated and there's a historical context to this as well so could you maybe take us to that yeah of course um you know the main narrative that we're that we're seeing in the media is that this is donald trump's fault and that donald trump obviously uh blamed the coronavirus on china he called it the china virus he called it the kung flu all these horrible things um and that certainly stoked a lot of anti-asian racism in the united states of course none of these claims are true but you know to chalk it up just to this one thing is just an, it's an incomplete picture uh donald trump was attacking china he was attacking asian people before coronavirus he's been attacking 
uh, Asian people throughout his administration. And then, you know, if you look at the larger picture, it's really like the United States has been attacking China for decades now. Um, you know, you could say many decades, you could say since 1949, it's been attacking China. So what we really wanted to point out with this video and at Breakthrough News is that this is not just about Donald Trump. It's not just about, um, you know, white male shooters, which is another huge problem in the United States. But it's also the reason these hate crimes, uh, this larger phenomenon of Asian, anti-Asian hate crimes is happening um, is not just because of these, you know, one or two factors. It's because of this Cold War with China. It's about this, uh, these uh, war drums banging uh, against China. And what we really wanted to demonstrate is that the United States has been talking about, has been aggressively trying to encircle, has been demonizing, has been trying to ostracize China uh, because China is beginning, is, is really challenging the U.S.'s position as the world superpower, as the unquestioned world superpower. China's economy, for example, is set to overtake the size of the U.S. economy in terms of GDP by 2028. Um, you know, Chinese phone manufacturers, Chinese car manufacturers are starting to rival U.S. companies. Um, you know, Huawei, for example, Huawei is actually the largest phone manufacturer in the world now. Uh, you know, just a few years ago, it was Samsung. Apple was second. But now it's Huawei. They're, they're the number one phone manufacturer. And a lot of people don't know that. But this is a huge challenge to the United States, not just because, you know, the U.S. wants its phone manufacturers out in front. It's aware that this is, you know, just one part of a larger trend, which is that the Chinese economy, the Chinese, uh, you know, nation is really going to overshadow and overtake the United States in a, in a lot of not just economic, but also political and diplomatic spheres. So the United States is afraid of this. And, you know, their their plan really is to attack China, to demonize China and to ostracize China before they have a chance to really, you know, uh, change the, the framework and the layout of the global system. So the shooting we saw in Atlanta um, and all of these anti-Asian hate crimes, uh, by the way, in New York City, where I live, anti-Asian anti -Asian hate crimes have gone up 1,900%, 1,900% in the last year. All of these hate crimes are a consequence of this, you know, anti-China sentiment of these anti-China stories, the anti-China propaganda in the media. And um, with this comes a lot of racist depiture, uh, depictions of Chinese people, of the Chinese president, of the Chinese government. So, you know, people are seeing these images on TV. They're seeing it on Saturday Night Live. They're seeing it on the news. And that subconsciously affects people. They see some Asian person on the street, whether or not they're Chinese, they might be Korean, they might be you know, Indonesian, they might be Filipino, whatever, and they get attacked because uh, people associate them with, with China, they associate Asian, they think all Asian people are Chinese, and then they get attacked. So yeah, you know, this, this hate crime phenomenon is really inseparable from the US war drive against China. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.